On July 29th, a worker at the Jiangmen Municipal Service Center held a sign in protest. The sign read, Four months of unpaid wages, no more delays. This kind of protest due to wage arrears in government positions has become quite common. Currently, China's economy continues to decline without showing any improvement, and local governments are increasingly struggling financially. Recently, many mainland civil servants have complained on social media that their salaries will be significantly reduced, with some facing nearly a 30% cut. This news has sparked a lot of discussion, and the topic of the iron rice bowl is no longer secure, is trending online. A blogger named Xiao Zhang Tells the Truth is a contract worker. She recently received internal information that both civil servants and contract workers will face significant pay cuts. She said, The wind of pay cuts has finally blown our way. Are there any friends here who are also contract workers and have received news about pay cuts? Actually, the news of pay cuts for civil servants in certain areas has been circulating for a while, and some local governments have even been unable to pay wages. This isn't new. In my hometown, a third-tier city, there have been many such cases, but I didn't take it seriously because I work in a first-tier city. So even though the news of pay cuts was spreading, I didn't hear anything from my superiors about it. Occasionally, I heard colleagues mention that their year-end bonuses were deducted, but I didn't pay much attention to it. It wasn't until I heard that we would also face pay cuts that I realized this wasn't a dream. This is real, and there is news that anyone whose salary comes from the government will face pay cuts, and it could be as much as 20%. Living expenses in big cities are already high. After deducting rent and other living costs, there might be very little left after the pay cut. The current environment is really tough. After hearing this news, I suddenly felt very lost. If I only have three or four thousand left each month, it definitely won't be enough to live in a big city. Many other netizens working in government positions said that during meetings, their superior told them that everyone's salaries would soon be cut by 30%. The one secure iron rice bowl is becoming harder to hold on to. Another netizen said that their salaries had already been reduced before, and now with another 30% cut, it would be impossible to get by. Workloads have increased, but salaries have decreased. This is not something people can easily accept. Yet there is no way to change it because, in the context of China's economic decline, this is inevitable. From the information disclosed by these government workers, it seems that the salary cuts for all permanent personnel will be substantial. However, the method of salary reduction varies in different regions. In the video, a civil servant friend of the blogger mentioned that in some places, the so-called salary cut is not about reducing wages, but about cutting benefits. He said, I was chatting with a civil servant friend and he said that their income has decreased in the past two years. I asked if their salaries had been cut, he said their salaries hadn't been reduced. So I asked why their income had dropped if their salaries hadn't. He explained that a civil servant's salary isn't the same as their income, and there's a big difference between the two. Their salaries are fixed and rarely change, usually around 3,000 to 4,000 yuan for most people. However, the local government provides subsidies based on the annual financial surplus. The fluctuation in income comes from various benefits, and this can vary widely widely across different regions, sometimes by as much as 10 times. Generally, civil servants' incomes in most cities are higher than 80% of the local population. While they may not be very wealthy, they can live quite well. So, although their salaries haven't decreased in the past two years, their overall income has dropped. My friend also said that they don't usually talk about this with others. If someone who isn't a civil servant asks about their income, they'll only mention the 3,000 to 4,000 yuan salary. On the surface, it seems like there isn't much of a problem, since salaries haven't been cut. But the reality is that the government can no longer support the high benefits for civil servants, so they have to reduce income, which is more justifiable to the public. In addition to salary cuts, there is also news of layoffs for contract workers. In China, contract workers are mainly employed in government agencies or public institutions through labor dispatch but are not officially on the payroll. Common contract workers include those employed by government agencies, 
hospitals, schools, and other institutions under contract. These contract workers do not have equal opportunity and economic benefits as official employees and are considered outside the official system. A netizen said that the recent wave of cleaning out contract workers has caused a lot of distress among leaders. When contract workers leave, the workload doesn't decrease and the remaining tasks are hard and tiring. Official staff are unwilling and unable to take on this task, so there is a lot of resentment about this cleanup. From the current information, this may be just the beginning. The next step could be substantial pay cuts for official employees, and some local governments have already started. In April this year, Yongchun County in Fujian issued a notice to dismissed contract workers. The notice roughly stated that the number of contract workers should be limited. If the number of contract workers exceeds 10% of the total position, they must be dismissed. This means that if a department has 100 official positions, it can hire a maximum of 10 contract workers. All departments employing more than 10 contract workers also need to reduce the number appropriately. But how large were the workforce of contract workers before the cuts? It is estimated that there were over 20 million contract workers across China. Last year, many government offices in places like Xijiang in Hubei or those in Inner Mongolia and Harbin in Heilongjiang dismissed contract workers. In Taoshan County, Hunan, 1,038 contract workers were dismissed and another county in Hunan dismissed 500 contract workers from the health and education system. After entering 2024, the cleanup of contract workers has accelerated. Additionally, Yongchun County's notice mentioned that all contract workers at government service windows should be dismissed. Temporary contract workers, such as those hired for seasonal work or to cover for official staff on leave, must leave once the work is done or the official staff returns. Since January this year, all unauthorized hire of contract workers must be dismissed and departments with existing contract workers must reduce their numbers. A social media blogger bluntly stated, After three years of the pandemic, houses aren't selling and local governments are financially struggling. They have no choice but to cut staff. The Chinese government's move to cut the income and positions of civil servants not only exacerbates the already severe discontent among officials, but could also be the final straw for the CCP system. In recent years, under the guise of maintaining the authority of party leader Xi Jinping and centralized and unified leadership, the CCP government has pushed a campaign to study Xi Jinping thought within the system. However, this has led to a state of passive resistance and lying flat among officials. Two former Chinese officials who recently went abroad revealed to foreign media that many within the system are fed up with political studies and the severe internal competition, and those who understand the situation want to leave the country. A civil servant and head of a central government department, Ms. Chang, came to Europe a year ago. She said that civil servants like her usually work until retirement. Her department is one of the best in the city, and their salaries weren't affected by the pandemic. However, in the past two years, several colleagues in her department resigned, and she herself resigned and left China last year. Ms. Chang mentioned that what really bothers all civil servants is studying the so-called Xi Jinping thought. This kind of ideological surveillance has been intensifying, especially during the past three years of the pandemic. Meetings at work are all about studying Xi Jinping thought, leaving the actual work to be done after hours, causing widespread complaints. Even though she isn't a party member, Ms. Chang was also forced to write various ideological reports. She said, party members within the system have it even worse. They have frequent meetings and have to write study notes. The party organization requires handwritten reports, and the workload for these party members is so heavy that some departments even assign specific personnel to handle party affairs, often resulting in overtime. Some people are so exhausted that by their 30s, they are already wearing 24 hours heart monitors. It feels like the atmosphere within the party has reverted to the Cultural Revolution era, with strict ideological control. Ms. Chang emphasized that she didn't want a promotion during her time in the system. 
She had been working for over ten years and just wanted to be happy, but even that was hard to achieve. Everyone deeply felt the shift towards more leftist policy at the top, and not only was ideological study intensified, but even celebrating Western holidays was banned. The party workers who handle daily party affairs act like spies, monitoring the actions of both government employees and ordinary people. Miss Chang recounted an incident. One Christmas Eve, I mentioned during a break that I would buy apples for everyone to enjoy. Immediately, a colleague in charge of party affairs said we were not allowed to celebrate Western holidays and that it was explicitly forbidden. So we couldn't even celebrate this small occasion. All warmth and camaraderie among colleagues were killed. Everyone monitors each other, and we all have to self-censor. It's extremely oppressive. Especially since the 20th Party Congress, numerous laws and regulations under the guise of national security have been introduced, creating a chilling effect. Miss Chang said that she no longer dares to post photos of her work environment on social media while traveling for work because they were often reminded during meetings not to do so. They frequently study the secrecy law, national security law, and anti-espionage law, and their learning outcomes are regularly checked. However, it's all fake. There aren't really such severe security issues. This learning creates a tense atmosphere where everyone in the office is on edge, afraid to take photos or speak freely, not even daring to take pictures of the office. In short, the once envied civil servant positions now merely meet basic security needs, ensuring a stable life, but making it impossible to fulfill higher needs like social connection, mutual care, respect, or self-actualization. Almost everyone, including leaders, is mentally and physically exhausted, living very stressful lives. Now, without freedom, thought. Dignity and in a backstabbing work environment, civil servants must also deal with meaningless work and salaries that can be cut at any time, making the once highly sought-after iron rice bowl lose its appeal. Professor Lu De Wan of Wuhan University School of Sociology mentioned in his grassroots investigation published earlier this year that at the local level, there's a common situation of shirking responsibilities with most township governments barely managing to operate. Some villages can pay their village officials, leading many to resign. To cope with higher authorities, local governments have to resort to various forms of deception. This article, which spread widely online, has now been removed from all social media platforms in China. Miss Chang believes the content of the article is basically true. Many local government civil servants in China are seeing their salaries reduced, sometimes by 60 percent. At the same time, they are now doing meaningless tasks. With the most typical example being the pandemic control efforts of the past few years, she said grassroots civil servants were tasked with promoting vaccination. Our workplace didn't have this task, but I know that in some northern cities like Heilongjiang, where the population has decreased by 200 over 10 years because people move elsewhere for work, local civil servants couldn't find enough people to vaccinate. To complete their task, they even paid people out of their own pockets to get vaccinated. Our workplace is paired with a poverty alleviation area, so we are required to buy their local specialty products, such as very expensive tea, bacon, and sausages. Both individuals and the workplace have to buy them. This work is very meaningless. Miss Chang also mentioned that during the pandemic, the provincial party organization department mobilized all civil servants who were locked down at home to become epidemic prevention workers. They were even threatened that if they didn't go, they would be dealt with later. She was forced to become a pandemic prevention worker and only receive a certificate in the end. She had a colleague who contracted an infection and developed white lung syndrome. Despite spending a lot of money on treatment, their health has not recovered since then. This is not just meaningless work; it's life-threatening work. Miss Lee, who moved to Europe six months ago, is also a former civil servant who left China. Before she left, she was a department head in a local government. She is nearly 50 years old and has been working for almost 30 years. In an interview with foreign media, Miss Lee revealed that she had just been promoted to head of department when the pandemic hit in China. She said, "We were urgently called back and required to stay at our workplace with our luggage, working as pandemic prevention staff." 
We had to conduct nucleic acid tests, recruit volunteers and nurses from the community, each earning at least 200 yuan a day. But we did almost the same amount of work as them, except for swabbing probes, yet we didn't receive any pay, not even the performance bonuses from 2020-2021. Miss Lee also mentioned that to meet the vaccination targets, they had to resort to fraud. Each person needed to obtain the ID numbers of three elderly people over 70 years old. These people didn't need to get the shot, they just had to be registered in the system as vaccinated. She even used the ID of a diseased friend to meet the quota, but even then, she couldn't fulfill the task. Later, Miss Lee recalled that after the lockdowns were lifted, the higher governments prioritized economic recovery and tasked local government civil servants with persuading businesses to register with the investment register to meet investment targets. Soon after, they had to participate in the Create a Civilized CD project, which involved picking up cigarette butts on the streets. In those three years, they did nothing that truly served the people. It was all about fulfilling the temporary whims of higher-ups, leaving local government workers feeling increasingly disheartened. In recent years, with rising youth unemployment, the civil service exam has become extremely popular. However, while many outside the system want to get in, those within are trying to find ways to escape China. Ms. Chang mentioned earlier, said, Our department has two people resigned, making it three including myself. Many more left or resigned from other departments. I don't have exact numbers because I rarely meet current employees, but I heard some left to pursue PhDs. Our workplace is the best in the city with great hidden benefits and retirement packages, yet many still resign, some even breaking their contracts. For example, my colleague Xiao Zhang, who had recently become a civil servant, decided to resign, despite the rule that civil servants cannot leave within five years. He even paid the penalty fee to leave. This is essentially the fallout from three years of strict pandemic policies. Everyone is scared. According to Ms. Chang, many are dissatisfied with their income and disappointed with the work environment. For her, it was mainly about the lack of freedom. Compared to freedom, those so-called benefits and hidden perks meant nothing to her. The exploitation from work and leadership made her yearn for freedom, so she fled China in 2023. For Miss Lee, these grassroots tasks didn't serve the residents but were full of deception. She had no colleagues or friends she could speak honestly with, and in critical moments, she felt expendable. This kind of life was hopeless. The people's lives were tough, businesses were closing, and the pervasive bleakness was disheartening. Both Miss Chang and Miss Lee's views reveal a common desire among those aware of the CCP's dark underbelly within the system to escape China. As Miss Chang said, since I went abroad, many colleagues have asked me how to go abroad. Just a few days ago, someone asked me to help them leave. Although everyone speaks cautiously on WeChat, I know they share the same thoughts. In essence, the CCP system is like a meat grinder. Some young people enter with high hopes and ambitions, wanting to make a difference, but the system cares only about maintaining its power, not genuinely serving the people. Over time, even the goodness in people fades away and everyone becomes a power-chasing, emotionless machine. What hope is left in such a society? For the disillusioned youth, the only options are to leave the party or escape the country. Mm -hmm.